Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, let me wipe my tears. Hold on one moment. Hold on, hold on. Oh, okay, the camera's on. All righty. Well, you know, I'm getting ready to show you a clip of false prophet Dutch sheets. And I got the tissue here because I want to hand it to him. You know, he gets teared up talking about wrapping himself in the flag and how he was more so caught from being a missionary where he thought after Bible school that he was going to be a missionary and, and, and go to other parts of the world. But somehow he heard from the Lord and told him to focus on America. Take a look at the clip of him uh, while he's getting teared up as he talks about wrapping himself in the flag. And I'll continue to wipe my tears uh, right here. We'll be back. And I know at one point, and I know you're not supposed to let the flag touch the ground, but I was out of control, okay? I went to the over in the corner, and I, I grabbed a flag we had, and I wrapped it around me, and I laid on the floor. And I sobbed, and I knew I was crying with, with him. I knew we were crying together for this nation, Gene. And it became so intense <clears throat> that at one point, I said, and I meant this, this was not hype or I'm not trying to be sensational here. I said, God, please, you have to stop this because my heart is literally going to break and I'm going to die. And I said, please don't kill me. You see, so that's him talking about getting wrapped up in and feeling like, you know, he's called to save the nation. Now, I believe that he said, and I'm going to show you the clip where he talks about that. Let me show you that real quick. I knew if, if we didn't see things turn around where we would end up. My, my wife and I, when we came out of Bible college, we, we wanted to be missionaries. Uh, we were we were determined that we would be uh, going to other nations and laying our lives down for 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 a people who'd never heard the gospel or 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 maybe several nations. And it was a stretch. It was a, it was a almost uh, it was hard for us to accept that it was really the Lord when He first began to turn our hearts and say, "I don't I don't want you to go to another nation. I need you here." I said, but Lord, there's just a church on every corner. It's the most gospel inundated country in the world. You know, let us go someplace that have, where they haven't heard. And he said, I need you here. So he began to really just grip our hearts slowly for America. You see what he's talking about, where he talks about uh, being, you know, leaving Bible school, him and his wife, college or so, and, you know, having a different mission and believing that he heard from God. You know, I believe that that might have been possible. I, I believe that part. You know, so a lot of times we think we have certain plans. We all do. And the Lord takes us in another direction. And the Lord may have wanted him to minister here. But here's where the problem lies. This is where, it, you know, this is where his label of false prophet has come upon him. Look who's on the stage with them. Look at the characters on the stage. False Pastor Hank Kuhneman. You see that? To the right. That's False Pastor Hank Kuhneman. They, they all, remember I told you they all hang out together? And then on the left is Mike Lindell. He's a, you know, self-made millionaire. He, he, he talks about the Lord. He's you know, professes Christ. But... What do they all have in common? And then we're not, we won't talk about the network thing that they're on, but what do they all have in common? They've been pushing the big lie. Mike Lindell has been ordered, he's ordered, he's got to deal with that billion dollar lawsuit that he's still dealing with, and he's been complaining. He's just recently, he's more so came out here recently complaining on another show about his company going under. He has, he was supposed to have been expanding his company and doing all of these great things, but because he jumped on the lie and went on this bandwagon of following this lie and, and pushing uh, 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 this nationalism narrative, 
his company's going under. And he's talking about, oh, my workers, I, I have liberals and, and, and people of all races and all of these different things that work for me and they don't have no way to provide for themselves because everything, you know, who did that was him. If he wasn't out here lying and continuing to push the lies, these people, his workers, wouldn't be about to be out of a job. And I hope they're looking for jobs because the guy's going under. Because God's not going to allow, like I tell you, his name to be continuously shamed and drugged through the mud like that. And here he is. They're all together on stage. And you hear this story that sound great from Dutch and all of this stuff about America. But then this, as we always talk, they always talk about this great awakening. America's got, America, as I say, so much sins that America continues to push. And one of them is this lion that you're sitting there saying the Lord told you this and that, that and that, all of these prophets and this pastor, Hank Kuhneman, I, I wish I could show you the service that he had Sunday where I'm just thinking like, how do the people want to stand? I mean, he stood there with some prof false prophetic, you know, where he's standing up there for over 10 minutes talking. And everyone's standing and this guy's this more so ranting and raving and babbling and talking crazy. And they do this week after week during the Bible studies. Doing, they're always standing and, and listening to these people talk nonsense, non-truths, and all of this stuff. And here's another thing. All three of these people that's on the stage that you see, they were at the Capitol January the 6th. Somehow they up there because they were so caught up in somehow the flag and this nationalism stuff. Remember I told you in the last message, I, you know, I just don't understand or it, somebody to be that distraught and upset that a particular politician or whoever they want in place and power, they did not win, that they are so, they're so desperate for power and the change in America and places around the world to happen, that you are willing to overthrow a government, you're willing to continuously lie in the name of the Lord and continues to push lies and go around the churches and have events and raise money and all of this stuff off of lies in the name of the Lord. That's what's crazy. And you think that the Lord's going to rain down some type of revival? You're lucky he don't rain down fire and brimstone. That's what you're lucky because all of these people, I told you, as I mentioned in the last message, I would be scared to death to walk into a church and stand in a pulpit and say, thus saith the Lord that he didn't, that he's speaking to me, that he's telling me these things that we know don't line up with the scriptures. I would be scared to death. I would be afraid that I would be something bad. I would die right there on the spot in the pulpit, or I might not make it out to church parking lot without something happening. I would be scared. That's the fear. I mean, we're to love the Lord. He's a merciful, loving, kind God. And, you know, the fear, uh, you know, uh, having a fear, a healthy fear. I mean, we're not to walk around, you know, duck it, worry like, oh, God, did, if I do that, is this going to be the end today? We went, oh, we're not supposed to live like that. But we're supposed to respect him for who he is and know who he is and what he's done for us. And how, I mean, shameful that these people, all of these people, these nationalist people, that they continue to go on platforms. And look, let me show you this. Look, I mean, look at the amount of people. I mean, I, if you didn't catch it, I'm going to show you the, the, this. Look at the amount of people that are setting this. And you're going to help me get her back. That's what he said to me. Setting in these events, thousands, they're coming out. I mean, the numbers are growing and growing and growing. The YouTube channels that push this stuff and the net, all of this stuff, they're growing where people are so deceived to where it's caused me to, I'm going to make a message where there's a story in the Bible that as I, I've been thinking about it the last week and I've been going over and going over and I have found, finally picked out my points that I want to make that really correlates with these people. 
and the people that are pushing the message, the frost people that are in the leadership positions doing this stuff. So stay tuned for that because it's going to be really interesting and really good. And, you know, so I just have to show you guys this because it's funny. I mean, it, it's funny, but then it's not because too many people, souls are being lost. They, they, they're just lost. You're sitting there and you didn't bought into this crap. The love I have for this nation was put there by God. And here's what he said to me. For what I'm going to do in this hour in the nations of the earth, the harvest that I am going to reap, I must have this nation. And you're going to help me get her back. That's what he said to me. I'm proud because I know God raised up a nation under him with his heart to spread the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ to all the nations of the earth. And I say to you right now, that is not going to be stolen. Our destiny is not over. He is going to save this nation. And a third great awakening is coming to this nation. And it's going to give us the transformation that we need. you know, with these false claims that the Constitution, you know, everybody uh, uh, was Christian and all of this, you know, these false th narratives that they make up that all of this stuff, there's so much damage that we here in America have done that we still need to lay on the table and it needs to be discussed. If anything, it all needs to be laid upon the table in other countries around the world that is guilty of it as well and come before the Lord and, and, and bring it before his feet. But you know what? There's a lot of things that they, they won't do that. They don't want, they won't do it. Why? Because they're worried about money. They're worried about power. They're worried about so much. They don't want to admit it. I was thinking that there was a, 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 a what was that? The, um, president was on 60 minutes if you, you guys didn't see that where he was talking and he said and i hear that i see this all the time whether it's some uh, republican sides of people or or whatever pe or the but he was saying or democrat sides of people he was saying that he knows several republicans have come to him saying you know well we want to kind of help you out with this or that but if we do that we got to worry about being primary and we you know we're going to lose our seat and I said, you know what? That's a coward. That's a coward. You know, you can't worry about, you stand for the truth. That's, that's the problem. You know, you, we've had leaders sacrifice their lives over the, over the decades, over the centuries. You know, people have stood for what was right and lost their lives and for it. Many of people. And sometimes that's what it boils down to. You just got to stand for what's right. So what? You lose your seat. You know, lot, most of them people that's in Congress and in, in, in a political arena, they got law degrees. They've been to college. They're not no dummies. You know, it's not like they wouldn't, wouldn't get another job. But no, they want the gravy job. They want to be here in the government where they only work a few weeks out of the year and don't do anything anyway. But stand up for what's right. How, why set up and allow lies to continue to be pushed out there and stuff and not stand up and challenge that? Why allow your, if you care, come you care about your countries and these people, they don't care. And that's the thing with this, these false pastor Hank Kuhnemans and, and these false people and, 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 and Mike Lindell. Like, I, I, I just don't get it. Like I said, with him, Many of you don't know, he had a bad drug habit and things like that. I don't know if it's the drugs or just like when I show you that clip of Timothy Dixon. 
Bilangan ini yang berupa Malik yang bertosu Maria Hari Kristi Tenzanglo Milero tu ribi histori yang notas pikiran sile kura Hilir ya And somebody mentioned there, uh, one of the subscribers mentioned that it reminds me, he reminded me of uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar where he's lost his, lose, lost his mind. And that's really what it's boiling down to. A lot of these people, these false prophets and all of these people, they are actually losing their minds. They're, if you notice, they progressed to more craziness as the months of went by. And they're talking more crazy. They're doing more crazy things. And they don't even realize it. And guess what? Their followers don't even realize it as well. You know, all we can do, we're going to continue to shine the spotlight on these people. Continue to call them out. Continue to let them expose them for who they really are. Talk about the issues the church run away from. Evangelism for God is a channel where we do that. And we talk about Satan and his devices and punch them right in between the chops. So if you're new, consider subscribing. Hit like coming along for the journey. Because we're going to continue to march forward no matter how hard it is. We're going to continue to fight. These people, we got to, these people, we've got to push them out because the kingdom of God, God's word, his, his, his name is being damaged so bad to where too many people are walking away from the gospel. But thank God that there's power in the word and thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit that will continue to give us the power and continue to do the work because that's the goal. We don't, that's the problem. We want to act like we can control and do everything. No, the Holy Spirit that he imparted to us before he left, Jesus Christ, does the work. Let the Holy Spirit lead and we follow. And that's what we do here. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.